Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Recently, I asked Mint Mobile's legal team if big wireless companies are allowed to raise prices due to inflation. They said yes. And then when I asked if raising prices technically violates those onerous to your contracts, they said, what the f*** are you talking about, you insane Hollywood ass. So to recap, we're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows full terms at mintmobile.com. Here's a cool fact. A crocodile can't stick out its tongue. Another cool fact, you can get short-term health insurance for a month or just under a year in some states. United Healthcare short-term insurance plans are designed for people who are between jobs, coming off their parents' plan, or turning a side hustle into a full-time gig. Underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, they offer flexible, budget-friendly coverage with access to a nationwide network of doctors and hospitals. Get more cool facts about United Healthcare short-term plans at uh1.com. Hi, I'm Dori Shafrir, and I'm Kate Spencer, and we are the hosts of Forever 35. And today, we're talking about Club Med, the best all-inclusive getaway for families. Today, Club Med has nearly 70 resorts worldwide, from beachside resorts in the Caribbean and Mexico, to magical locations in the Maldives and Morocco, to ski resorts in the mountains from Canada to the Alps. Between their all-inclusive family programming, wellness offerings, land and water sports, and their French heritage-inspired food and drink offerings, Club Med is the best way to elevate your family getaway, no matter which location you're at. To learn more, visit clubmed.us. Pursuing your future doesn't end at 40. In fact, it may mark the beginning of knowing who you are, what you're capable of, and what you really want. But knowing what's next and how to get there can be a challenge, especially when old narratives play on repeat. Liberty Road is here to share stories so that you can consider your possibilities, pursue your purpose, and move into your future with intention. I'm your host, Netta Jones, and we're here to listen, learn, and liberate dreams one episode at a time. Well, hello, Liberty listeners. Welcome to another episode of Liberty Road. Today, you guys are in for a real treat. You get to hear from Willow Older and Deborah Huber of Today I Noticed, um, which is a darling, darling book, but don't be fooled. It's more than that. There's so much to this book of intentional noticing, and I'm going to let them uh, unpack that a little bit more with us. Deborah, let's kick this off with you. What led each of you to write and illustrate Today I Noticed? Well, actually, we got Today I Noticed got started in a very unexpected way. And um, just to give people a little bit of your audience, a little bit of a background on what Today I Noticed is, it's a surprisingly simple mindfulness practice that's based on the power of paying attention. And the idea is very simple. You just let the three words today I noticed inspire you to notice the little moments of everyday life that often just slip right by. And when you do that, it just puts you right in the present moment. And there's sort of a second part to the, the practice, which is a creative element where at some point in the day, you sit down and have a little creative moment of where you draw and write a very short description of, of something that you noticed that day. And that, that simple act of paying attention allows you to see just the beauty, the joy, the silliness, the humor in, in every day. And it really just changes the way you see the world. And then back to sort of how we got started, maybe you want to tell that story, Willow. I do. Nada, you'll laugh because um, like many, you know, great ideas, this happened because of a mistake or something completely unintentional. And it's actually, it's kind of hard to believe. Today, I noticed started almost five and a half years ago. We have a hard time oh, believing wow. that. Uh, but it was five and a half years ago on a Wednesday and Deborah and I decided that instead of working at our desks all day, we would play a little bit of hooky and take ourselves on a little San Francisco adventure. There was an exhibit at MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, that we were excited to go and see. And then we were going to have lunch and, you know, have some fun. 
we were so pleased because we got great parking and we got our coffee and rocked on up to the front door of MoMA. We were first in line. And we stood there a few for a few minutes and eventually started a little less ple- feeling a little less pleased with ourselves because we realized MoMA is closed on Wednesdays. A very small <laughs> but important detail that we would have known if we had been paying attention. So we thought, right, we're going to just do a little pivot here. We're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. And we came up with a plan B. Plan B was to have just a walking adventure exploration in downtown San Francisco, where we hadn't been for a while. But instead of just chatting and getting caught up in our conversation as we are prone to do, we decided to make this a little bit of a different exploration. And we would give ourselves the assignment of paying attention, of noticing what was around us, what we were feeling, what was happening in the next couple of hours. And just putting that little phrase in the back of our minds made these tiny moments just rise to the level of consciousness. Mm. And it was everything from discovering a gorgeous, historic Frank Lloyd Wright building that was hidden behind a row of pop-up taco trucks. There were little pink flowers growing up through the cracks of the sort of dirty sidewalks. And one moment that... I think we will always remember, is seeing this older couple holding hands and walking sort of slowly together across the street. These were all observations and moments that were there for the taking, but you just had to decide to pay attention. And that's what we did. Mm. And in doing so, this afternoon of this failed plan to go see art turned into an exhibit of its own, really. We were just tuning into the world around us. And we thought, well, we've been looking for a creative experiment or project to do between the two of us. Maybe this is it. So we made that decision. And Deb, why don't you talk about what happened after that? Well, we just uh, were so excited about the idea that we zipped off to the art store the next day, picked up some simple art supplies, and started noticing and we, we both had uh, little journals and we would record something that we had noticed each day. And we didn't really talk about it with each other. We just sort of did it. And then after a couple of weeks, we decided to get together and share what we had been noticing. Mm-hmm. And we really didn't know what to expect. We met at a, our, our local bar. Willow and I live near each other. And bellied on up to the bar, ordered a couple of gimlets and opened our journals and started looking at our tins. We call, we call these observations tins, which stands for Today I Noticed. And as we did, we just found ourselves repeatedly saying, oh my gosh, I noticed that, or I feel that way, or that happens to me. And we were really struck by how much of our daily lives we have in common. And I think that Mm. most of us actually have in common. Mm. And the other thing that we talked a lot about was doing this, really paying attention every day to things that we notice, just made uh, made the world brighter and richer and um, honestly, more interesting. It was a little bit like traveling, like where everything is new. It's like our eyes got cleaned. That's such a great way to put it, Deb, about, you know, like when you travel, you pay attention to everything because everything is new and different. And this is a way to really make the most familiar, ordinary day new and different. And Honestly, we were just so delighted by this conversation that we were having through Today I Noticed, because that's how it felt, is we're sitting next to each other, we're turning each page and looking at it, what each other's observations and our little sketches, which were just something we thought, well, we'll up the creative ante a little bit. We won't just notice, but we will also make a mark on the page in some way to illustrate uh, whatever the observation is. And creating that sort of record of what we'd noticed not only made it more meaningful and more interesting, but also something really shareable. And I think that Mm -hmm. built the connection and um, also made us realize, wow, this is something that other people might be interested in as well. 
so that was actually my my next question was when you guys decided that this would be a project was the intention this is a project between us to bring us together or was this the intention this would be a project that we would make public at some point this started as an absolutely private project slash experiment okay. slash one more crazy idea that Deb and Willow have and we'll see, you know, what that leads to. Yeah. Debra, you were going to say something. We diligently did this for quite a while. And honestly, we were so sort of delighted with it. We loved how how it was affecting us that we we thought it might be fun to share it with others. So we actually um, built a website where other people could upload their tins. That was pretty interesting because some people did jump in and, and, and started noticing and we got great feedback about how they were enjoying it. And then because we got positive feedback, we kind of scratched our heads and said, well, maybe instead of having this on our website where not a lot of people go, we should go where the people are. And so we yeah. moved over to Instagram and started building an audience there. And that was a little bit different because people on Instagram couldn't upload to our account, but but sure. they could um, both enjoy the, t the tins that we were doing. And also we got a lot of feedback about how it was inspiring people to, to notice the little things. And it's so shareable on Instagram. So it's so easy for anybody to to forward that, to post it on their own, you know, story or feed. And so the exposure, I'm sure, was awesome on Instagram in a way that you can't really do on, on your website. Right. You guys got a lot of feedback. You guys were seeing the impact in your own lives. You guys were understanding that these tins were something that we all had in common. Is that what led to taking this one step further and deciding to create a coaching program around it? Yeah. And I'll actually go back just a little bit. I think that for me anyway, the moment that I realized that today I noticed had legs, however we want to you know, define that. Um, Deb and I both have husbands and we both have boys. I have two boys. Deb has one son. And um, they're between, uh, God, 19 and 21 now, if I did my math right. <laughs> so, you know, a few years back, they were younger teens and tweens. And when our boys started dropping the phrase, today I notice, in their, you know, sort of daily conversation, we're like, okay, we have something here. The beauty of today I notice is that all you need is to have that phrase in your mind and you're already doing it. And so it became mm -hmm. sort of a shortcut in many conversations that we had with people. So you can see this was sort of building our um, our confidence and our case in, you know, running workshops. And like today, I noticed we started very small with workshops. In fact, our very first workshop was a uh, deep pandemic and it was for a, a virtual call with 30 octogenarians who are all part of the, one of the villages, uh, the retirement communities, you know, called the villages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we could not get them off the call. We were on this call for an hour and a half. Aww. We had no idea if anyone, how people were going to respond to this. It was our very first workshop. But someone invited us to do this, someone in our network. Mm -hmm. No money, no expectation, nothing. But saying yes to that was a hugely important step for us because it gave us a deadline. It forced us to create a presentation, you know, a professional looking presentation. We got our thoughts in order. We figured out what we wanted to talk about. We organized, you know, how we were going to present this. And then the, you know, the sort of the real value proposition was inviting these 80 year olds, um, grandparents, almost all of them, to participate in the interactive module of our workshop and create a tin of their own and then share it. And this was on Zoom. So people were just holding up, you know, their pieces of paper to to their screens. And they were so they first of all, they got it in an instant. There this is such a simple mm. idea to grok. And we see this in our workshops all the time. And they were so eager to take the time to have that creative bite-sized break and then to share it. And there was so much connection going on. And again, deep COVID, these were 
uh, people who hadn't seen their families in you know several months because they were locked down for health and safety reasons. And it was a powerful way for them to connect with each other. And and several of them, I remember, Deb, they were creating tins that they were going to share with their grandchildren um, when they got to see them again. So we came out of that, honestly, like I have goosebumps just remembering that experience. Mm. And saying yes to that crazy invitation launched us into the workshop realm And we've now um, run in-person and virtual workshops for clients all over the world, really, including the Auckland University of Technology, their faculty and staff. We were at QuickBooks Connect, the huge Intuit conference in Vegas, PG&E, Make-A-Wish. Like We've covered so many different audiences because this phrase and this practice works for anyone. Sure. Sure. And so, like you said, it's so simple to grasp. Like, as soon as you say it, people kind of are flooded with, with all these things. Deborah, how um, how did you guys sort of approach those workshops and, and all of a sudden finding yourselves, you know, becoming coaches? Like, where do you each come from, independent of one another, that you had that background that could pull all this together? Because noticing and doing something between the two of you as an as an act of friendship as a project is one thing and even illustrating and writing about it is another but now teaching it as a concept as a mindful concept is is yet another sort of level where do you guys each come from that you felt equipped to do that or not equipped and figured out how to do it that's such a good point and such a good question um i think that you know, in terms of where I come from, my, my career has been in the high-tech industry in various management and creative roles. So I'm accustomed to leading people, but that's a very different, or not very different, that's a somewhat different role than leading workshops and, and teaching people this idea. But I think the thing, and Willow may have a different answer for this, we were nervous um, to do it because it was new. And that's what happens when you do something new. But the thing that really drove me to feel great about it was that I had experienced today I noticed myself and I really believed in it. So it felt very natural and authentic. Like this was something that I want, I wanted to share because I truly believed that it could help people, that it would be a positive impact on their life. And you were talking about the various roles you had before Deborah. Was this something you had to create space for in your life or were you looking to sort of shift your time in spending it this way? Yeah, I had wound down working for a company and was doing um, contract work and had a lot of control over my time. Yeah. I ask the question, and Willow, I'm going to ask you a very similar question, but I ask it because I realize so many of our listeners are tuning into this podcast in particular because they're trying to figure out what's next for them. And they're listening to these stories to be inspired, to find themselves in these stories, to learn what was the experience that person had before they jumped, before they sort of leapt into what was next. And the stories of people who didn't, they were doing and did it anyway, are the ones that actually inspire the listener the most. If somebody hears a story of, oh, I had been a coach for 30 years, this was really easy for me to move into this, then, you know, they're inspired by what you've done and and they're still motivated by your story. But it's very different when what they hear is, oh, wait a minute, there's an opportunity for me to try something new. I don't have to necessarily take exactly what I did or my history and build on it. I can capitalize on what I learned, right? You capitalized on having led people, groups of people, managed people. I'm sure that came in handy, but it wasn't an exact sort of parallel role that you had played and were starting to play. Willow, just to ask you a similar question, like what was your background and how did you feel equipped or ill-equipped to move into this coaching? I love this question and, I, and I'm laughing because um, if 
figuring it out as you go along is inspiring to your listeners, then we got you covered, Netta. <laughs> so well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> yes. So my career is and was and continues to be as a professional wordsmith. I run my own editorial services business out of my house. I have worked at companies, I've worked on teams, but after my kids were born, I went back to working at home, which is something I've always been very comfortable with. The beginning of my career was working for myself. Then I went to various companies, and now I've come full circle. Mm -hmm. In that capacity, I am a consummate juggler. So I may be working on two or three different clients in the course of a day, you know, in the work that I need to do for them, whether it's for an ad agency or a small business or a much bigger company, creating content, websites, you name it. If it's got words and vowels and consonants, then I, I got it covered. So for me, today I noticed all the work that we have done around today, I noticed I, I really consider it like another one of my clients in that sense. Like mm -hmm. I will always give it um, the attention that it needs and I will just work it into one more busy day. And I'm totally fine with that. To be more specific as, you know, this sort of coach or, you know, leading these workshops no, I did not have any experience with that. I certainly had client meetings and, you know, given presentations and so on. This was an absolutely different game. And we don't profess to be gurus of mindfulness. We mm -hmm. have figured out a mindfulness practice that if we're the guinea pigs, we can tell you that it works. Because I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but Deb and I consider ourselves sort of failed meditators. <laughs> um, we have tried, you know, simultaneously together, separately to stay, keep our butts on that uh, meditation pillow. And we do it for a while and it feels great. And then inevitably we fall off because someone's sick or life's busy or it's, you know, there's a great Netflix binge, you name it. There's always an excuse for us. Um, we, we share this approach. As I said at the top of the show, we've been doing today, I noticed, for five and a half years now. And there's no end in sight because noticing is something that we're all doing all the time. Mm -hmm. And it is this really delicious, nourishing practice. So we're not going to stop. And to echo what Deb said, I think what gave us the confidence to lead workshops in this realm is our deep and genuine belief that this is something helpful, easy, fun, playful, and anyone can do it. That plus the level of professionalism that we both bring to everything that we do. Um, and that's something sure. that we'll, we'll talk about later in the show. Like, But we have found like-minded, we each have a like-minded partner in that. And that's hugely important for the, I think, ongoing growth and forward movement of Today I Noticed. If I could just add something when I was doing contract work, I was really looking for what's next, and I didn't know. And I was doing exactly what you said, looking for something sort of adjacent to what I had been doing. And I, I hadn't quite got there, but I did things with my time that I was interested in. Like I wrote a children's novel mm. and you know, sort of watched where that went, which, which was nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you did it. But, yeah, did but it. I did it. And I don't mean, yeah. I mean, who knows, someday it might go somewhere. Sure. And then when Willow and I came upon this, it really sort of stuck for a lot of the reasons we've talked about. I think there's something in there, which is when you're mm -hmm. thinking about what's next, go towards the things that interest you and see what happens. And not everything leads somewhere, but it just might. Yeah. Even the no's, you know, lead to some sort of yes. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Because I think we don't spend enough time pursuing things that we're curious about. And especially when it comes to this idea of vocation, career, we often think, okay, I've done all this work. I've amassed all this information and expertise. Surely my next step should be, as you put it so well, adjacent to that. And I think the beauty of what we're calling this middle third in life is that we actually 
get to explore these other parts of ourselves that we have been curious about, that we are drawn to, that perhaps haven't been explored. And we get to bring all that other expertise with us to figure out how to do that, the best way to do that. So surely that's helped you guys to make connections with companies to say, hey, we've got this coaching program to reach out to podcasters like me, uh, things like that. So thank you for saying that. that. That's really helpful. And to go back to something Willow was saying, You talked about the level of professionalism. We're talking about partnering this season on the podcast. You were friends. You had this project. You decided to make it public, to go somewhere with it. You had to also look at each other and say, hey, how much time do I want to spend with you? And, you know, many of us have dear people in our lives that we adore, but we don't want to work with all the time or at all including, you know, some of our our partners in life. So what was it that you each, and I want each of you to answer this, Willow, we'll start with you, but what was it that you thought, you know what, I can do this. The the synergy between Deborah and I is going to bring about something better than the sum of its parts or greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah, let's start there. I love this question. And my answer is probably going to be a little bit different than other uh, sort of partners that you have spoken yeah. with, because I would say for the most part, business partnerships and creative partnerships uh, begin intentionally. Like I pick you and yes, I have assessed this situation and I've seen how we work together. And yes, I think that this can be a fruitful, productive, like-minded partnership. We did not do that. We were dear friends, but not even like the longest term friends. We met when our kids were in middle school. Deb and I, when we met, we very quickly became each other's yes friends. Mm. Deb, do you want to go hear this talk? Yep. Willow, do you want to go check out this? Yep. Do you want to go try? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So without thinking about what this meant for the future of our relationship, we discovered a similar approach to curiosity, to exploring, to experimenting, creativity. We were both really um, lit up by a lot of the same things. That did not mean that we'd ever sat down and tried watercolor art together by any means. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I think that we are just very lucky that this has worked out We have met each other step by step. And when I say step, there have been so many steps and turns and winds and rewinds in this journey. And I feel like we have been there for each other and with each other every step of the way. I feel very lucky to be doing this with Deborah Huber. There's no one else that I can think of who I would be doing this with. Mm. And we have learned together and said yes together and considered things together. I mean, (laughs) we've read contracts together, you know, (laughs) we have done it all. And I think that the equation, you know, so you mentioned the, you know, the sum of the parts, the equation for us is Deb plus Willow equals Tim. And we just move forward with that in mind. Deborah, I'm going to ask you a similar question coming at it from a, a slightly different perspective or lens. You had so much in common. What was it that you found uniquely different about each of you and what you bring to the table that rounded out Tin and what Tin could be? Willow is a little bit more sort of spontaneous, maybe is the word, than me. And she's ready to jump into things a Mm. little bit faster. And I'm a little bit more sort of I think things through and I want to, you know, make sure this is the right thing. And I think that, well, sometimes that's been a little bit of a challenge, that difference in style. It's also been a real asset because Willow might be ready to jump and I have thought about it and I might there might be occasions where I slow her down and it's appropriate that I slow her down. Yeah. And on the other side, I might be thinking something through a little bit, 
more than is necessary. And Willow's sort of readiness to just go for it sort of pulls me along. I think in a lot of ways, we balance each other out. I think that's the main thing. I don't know if you agree with that, Willow. I think that is the main difference. And I think it ultimately is an asset, but it requires us, and, and we've talked about it, to acknowledge that difference. Sure. And, and, and to and value work, it. And to value it and to work with it. Yeah. It reminds me, I for many, many years, I was a small business consultant and dealt with lots of partnerships, healthy ones, unhealthy ones, help, helping people sort of divorce from uh, the partnership. And one of the conversations I would often have, and I think this is true in life relationships as well, but in order for a tree to be nurtured, it needs both its roots and its branches. And so there's often somebody who's rooting everything, who's grounding everything, who's slowing the pace down, who's taking in that nutrients, if you will. And then the fruit of that, right? The branches, literally the fruit of what's to come is also necessary for the longevity, the health, the life of the tree. And I think that's what I hear, Deborah, when you're talking about you and Willow is that you both sort of, if tin is the tree, that you both bring these values that are necessary for it to survive. I don't think either of us think, well, we have separate lanes. Like, this is what I do, and this is what Deb does. We we don't approach it that way. That being said, you know, Deb has a much more formal design background than I do. So when we were rebuilding our website, certainly, Deb, I felt like you were, you know, it was appropriate for you to make more of those initial decisions about the look and the feel. And, you know, those led to, of course, fruitful conversations my background as both a freelance writer and working with clients is, you know, I am very comfortable marketing and, you know, putting the word out and reaching out and writing the pitch and figuring out the angle. So there are times when I take more of a lead on that, on that aspect of it. And Deb will grab what I've written, you know, adapt it as she needs to. So it feels like it's coming from her and hit send. So I think that's one way that our partnership really stays in balance. And and we back each other up. So neither of us does does anything on their own. So if Mm -hmm. Willow writes something, as she said, I always add my piece to it. And if we're talking about design, Willow's the backup and we'll contribute and make, make great suggestions. So it's like... One, two, with everything we do. Thank you for being transparent about how that works. Again, I think for our listeners who are either in a partnership or looking for a partnership or even just thinking that would be fun, this is giving them, I think, a little bit of scaffolding. How could I do that? What might be necessary? So thanks for that. I want to get into the four, I was saying, pillars to myself. I don't know that you guys are calling them pillars, there's four things that happen, I guess, as a result of noticing. Can you share those four things and perhaps the impact of, you know, one example for each? Deborah, we'll start with you. One thing that happens, and we've talked a lot about this, um, is that it makes you feel more connected to, mm-hmm. to other people. When you notice, and particularly when you share just the little, the little moments you realize that you're, we're all the same, like we've said. And we see that on Instagram uh, with some of our followers who, who literally are from all over the world. Uh, we have people in the Middle East. We have a lot of people in Asia, um, Europe. And um, just as an example, we had recently someone in Singapore who was saying, we, when's your book going to come to Singapore? The things you notice are universal. Mm. And that really sort of warmed my heart because that's what we've observed and and it's what we've heard from others as well. What a gift in a climate in our world. I know. Where things are not, there's so many things that are not bringing us together. They're sort of tearing us apart, sadly. Yeah, and when you shrink down to the little 
things of your life, you, you know, what you, what you noticed on, you know, the pelicans you noticed in the, in the sky that day, or the, you know, the weeds, the, the flowers growing out of the sidewalk that, that Willow talked about. When you reduce life to the small things, which by the way, is what most of our life is, mm. the, the small things, you were not that different. Yeah. Yeah. Willow, what's another one of the four? What do you call them? What do you call these four things? Do you guys well, call them we call four them results? Or, or benefits. Um, benefits. There and and really, there are so many more than four, but sure. this is a way to sure. sort of make a, a workshop conversation, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> Obviously, when you take the time to pay attention, you are being present. And in that moment of presence, we have found this invitation to gratitude. Because when we slow down and pay attention to those silly, sweet, messy, totally mundane moments, we have the opportunity to appreciate them. There's a quote that we love, and I'm looking over here to make sure I get it right. Michael J. Fox, you know, the actor who's you know had Parkinson's yeah. for many, many years. I heard him say, uh, gratitude makes optimism sustainable. Mm. And boy, that just hit me right in the heart, you know, in order to feel like we can make it through the day, whether it's because of what's going on in the world, or just because of what's going on, you know, in your afternoon meeting, when you can find a moment of appreciation for, a, you know, just a little bit of sweetness or joy, it really is a sustaining, it has a sustaining effect on your optimism and your outlook. So that's another benefit that we just feel, again, so grateful for. When you guys were talking about uh, meditation and falling off the meditation, uh, you know, pillow, perch, if you will, tins kind of became a sustainable way for us to have that those focused moments. I thought about gratitude and I thought, oh, this is really interesting in the same way that the trend, I'm going to say, of gratitude journaling and, you know, being mindful about counting those things that you're grateful for has become a, a meaningful practice for people, something they could really kind of sink their teeth into. I find that to be true in what you're talking about too, that even though gratitude is a product of a tin, I can wrap my head around how that can be a meaningful practice for mindfulness. It makes a lot of sense. Let me just say something here, because this is something that Deb and I have talked about a lot. So the gratitude journal, the gratitude practice, that's wonderful. It's not something that I have stuck with in that formal sense of, you know, writing down three things that I'm grateful for, or so on and so forth. This is a way we find to access gratitude without the pressure of feeling grateful. And I do feel like that's worth mentioning, especially when you're thinking about gratitude and kids, young kids, teenagers, you know, older, young adults, it doesn't matter. I feel like I've, I've seen this, I've witnessed this with my own kids. Let's say you're gathered around the Thanksgiving table. It's sort of mandatory to, you know, before you pass the gravy, everyone goes around and says something that you're grateful for. That can be a very high pressure situation, especially mm -hmm. for younger people. And Deb and I, in addition to doing Today I Notice, we are still very, very dear friends, and we are lucky enough to be invited to Deb's Thanksgiving table every year. Mm -hmm. And several years ago, not surprisingly, we decided, hey, let's incorporate Today I Noticed into our Thanksgiving practice. <laughs> so now every year, everyone who comes to Deb's house for Thanksgiving creates a tin, and we share them, you know, at some point during the, the evening, and there's so much gratitude that is expressed during that portion of the evening. And it's not about sit down and tell me what you're grateful for. It comes <laughs> yeah. across organically, yeah. naturally, spontaneously, and it is utterly delightful every single time. Yeah, I love that. I totally get having three teenagers myself. I totally mm. get the pressure uh, of that. Okay, back to you, Deb. What's a, a third benefit? A third benefit has to do with the the creative aspect of today. I notice where you sit down and you sketch and write 
about your tin. I think a lot of us would like to have a creative practice, but don't, you know, a way to express ourselves creatively, but we don't necessarily feel like we have time. We're busy. There's a million things going on. And today I noticed is a way to have a very small creative pr practice or as small as you want or as large as you want in the sense that you can spend as much time as you want drawing and, and writing. And I will mention that I have... It is no exaggeration to say that I had no drawing experience probably since fourth grade before we started Today I Noticed. And wow. um, when Will and I came up with this idea that day in San Francisco, we were super enthused. And then I like had a moment and I said, but Willow, I can't draw. <laughs> and <laughs> she looked at me and she said, yes, you can. And instead of like resisting that and saying, no, 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 you don't understand. I really can't draw. I, I just went with it. And I said, oh, okay. And, the, and then went home and got, wow. you know, started drawing in my journal. And that is to say that we, we all can draw. We are, you know, if you can hold a pencil, you can draw. We're all artists in, in our own quirky, wonderful way. And sure. however we express ourselves with a pencil or pen or paint is uh, is good enough. Yeah. It works. Yeah. And that is one of, I think, the great benefits of Today I Noticed is that it brings out that side of you, whether you're an artist or not. Thanks for that invitation for all of our listeners. Willa, what's the, the fourth and final benefit that you guys have sort of identified? Well, interestingly, it's almost the antidote to the um, feeling present and grateful. And mm. it's worth acknowledging that, of course, not everything that we are noticing or will notice is positive. So when we slow down and tune in to what's around us, we get a little bit of separation from what is actually happening in that moment. We get a chance to sort of stand back and, and look at it in order to notice ourselves noticing it. And in that space, I think we have the opportunity to process and synthesize that, that event, that moment, that thing, whatever it is. And the writing and drawing element of notice, you know, it added to the noticing really is a way to figure out how we feel about something. A case in point, a very obvious case in point here is the pandemic. I think we had been on Instagram for maybe a year before March 2020 happened. Mm -hmm. And if you go back in our feed, you can actually see like the bookmark moment, the tin that places us in history, that marks the start of the pandemic for us. You know, there's weeks and days, you know, on either side of that that date. But um, I sat down and made a tin about what does six feet look like? And six feet is the length of a boa constrictor. It's the height of my husband. It's my son's twin bed. So there was a lightness to it, obviously. But really, it was a very serious context because all of a sudden we're obsessed with six feet and what on earth that feels like and looks like to save our own lives. So just being able to sit down and think about what was happening in the world at that moment and to record it with words and an image of some sort really helped me get a grip on what was happening and just sort of grab that one particular instance and maybe control it just a little bit in a world that felt really out of control. Processing, synthesizing, it's a powerful way to figure out how you feel about something. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm sorry I wasn't following you guys all the way back then. That would have been such a gift to have have those moments of levity and, and lightness. But I'm sure glad lots of other people got to experience them. As I said earlier, we were talking about relationships this season, and um, you guys were gracious enough to share a little bit about your own relationship. But I also realize, especially as we're talking to women in this in this middle third, that of equal importance, uh, perhaps even more, is the relationship that they have with themselves. And one of the things that this idea of tins does is it puts context or gives us moments of pause to think about how we see both ourselves in the world, but the world itself, right? What do you guys think is so important about, you have an audience that goes beyond 
women in midlife, right? But what do you think is particularly important about women in midlife and what we call midlife here is 40s, 50s, and 60s? What do you think is important about the idea of intentional noticing that's so important to this particular demographic? And Deb, I'll start with you. I think one of the things that happens in the this phase of life is that we're ready for change. And, you know, things don't necessarily feel urgent in the way that they used to, and that we have a bit of a desire to slow down and take life in, uh, take life in more instead of just Mm -hmm. being on a a track charging ahead. When you in notice, you know, you adapt this idea of really noticing it intentionally, that's what happens. You slow down, you appreciate, like we've talked about, you appreciate things that you maybe in the past just didn't come into your field of vision because you were moving so fast. And as we've talked a lot about in this in, in this um, conversation, that is a really lovely and nourishing thing. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Willow, anything to add to that? This is a time of so much change, mm-hmm. whether you have kids that are out of the house. I'm an empty nester now. So that was a huge change. And now I feel like the huge change is when my kids come home and I have to now adapt to them being yeah. home. I always say yeah. my kids are my favorite visitors and my worst house guests. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that today I noticed for us personally and also as a practice for those who are interested in exploring it is a reminder of how adaptable we are. And when we start tracking these little moments, we get to see how how life is evolving. And it's evolving on a sort of micro level all the time. It doesn't have to be a macro change. It doesn't have to be a book deal. It doesn't have to be a new baby. It can be, um, oh, God, it just caught myself doing this thing that I realized I do all the time. And I'm so silly or, you know, whatever yeah. it might be. I'm knitting these days. So I just love knitting hats for people. Like that brings me so much joy. If someone gives me a homemade gift, like these tiny little moments of sort of recognition and connection, I think today I notice creates a shortcut to accessing sort of the goodness and the the extraordinariness of those ordinary little moments. When you are noticing things, oh, things over time in this intentional way, you... Learn, learn things about yourself. So, mm-hmm. um, one mm-hmm. as an example, one of the thing, one of the things that Willow and I have noticed is that, well, for me, I have noticed that I often do tins about people. I'm I'm oriented to noticing things about people, and often I notice sweet things. Willow Willow tends to notice. The funny things around mm. her, and it's, it, these are not absolutes at all. Sure, but sure, we had never thought about that before, and so I think we both, you know, find that kind of interesting to an interesting thing to learn about ourselves. Yeah, of course. And and one more thing, and I think of this course. is really important for people to understand: there is nothing too small to be worth noticing. Mm. So this is a way of making those ordinary moments special and extraordinary simply by noticing them. If you want to take that extra creative step of recording them and illustrating them, that's a gift for yourself. But it also creates a memory. It creates something shareable. It creates something tangible. It's it's sort of an elevation of those tiny little moments, which are what make up our lives. Sure, sure. Thank you both so much. I feel like... um, this podcast is a great companion piece to the book. I'm excited for so many people to listen to it because the conversation that you've led us into not only gives us context, but it really um, helps us to understand the value of noticing and why this intentional exercise can really be so meaningful 
um, in our lives. So thank you guys for spending this time. But before I let you go, we're going to do our fast five. I'm going to ask, um, we're going to toggle back and forth. So I'll ask uh, you each a question and just kind of give us really quickly the word or the thing that comes to mind. So Deborah, I'll start with you. What's a practice that keeps you grounded? I have a feeling I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll, uh, you know what it is. You're absolutely yes, right. Yes. But I'll just say it. My a second practice is I'm living, I live in San Francisco right now. I ride my bike every day along the water and uh, I see the beautiful blue bay, bay and I look up at the sky and I see glorious pelicans and I can't think of a better way to start the day. Oh, riding a bike daily sounds lovely. I, I should think about that. Um, <laughs> and then Willa, what are you currently reading? Oh, well, I always have an audio book going and I always have a book going. So okay. I just finished Yellow Face by uh -huh. R.F. Kuang. And it's okay. a fascinating read for especially if you're interested in books, publishing, authorship, authenticity, really, and lots of twists and turns along the way. And I just finished reading The Bee Sting, which a lot of people are reading right now. And I picked up a new book purely on the basis of its title, which I think is so delightful, The Expectant Detectives. And that is by Cat Ailes. So it's a detective story. We'll make sure to have uh, links to all of those in, in the show notes. And then, uh, Deborah, what's one thing that you noticed, that you have noticed, that has profoundly impacted your life? Things are just not as urgent and critical. Ah. Mm -hmm. as they used to be. And, and, and I feel like I have a better sense of what really matters. That's one of the benefits of this season of life, right? And Willow, what is it that you're loving about this season, about this middle third of life? I'm going to say there's two things. One is being comfortable being bold and saying, yep, let's do that. And the second thing is watching my beloved boys become delightful young men. Mm. And I am a very proud parent. And I have two boys who are absolutely wonderful, very different from each other. They're on different paths. And they both have a really good moral compass. They both call regularly good for them. <laughs> and they share things with us. And it just makes I'm so proud to be their mom every day. I'm going to ask each of you this last question. So obviously the podcast is called Liberty Road. Everything we do here is really to liberate women in this middle third of life. How is writing and illustrating today, I noticed, and I'm going to include coaching as well. How has that liberated you? Deborah? we'll start with you. It has shown me not to be afraid to express my authentic self that however you can express yourself, um, if it's true to who you are, it's good. That's a nugget for us. Thank you for that. Willow, how about you? Well, I think it has made me realize with, with more clarity than ever how important it is to cr be creating and making something. For me, that's, you know, today I noticed it's knitting, it's, you know, it's, it's a variety of things. But it has offered a mindfulness practice that I can stick with, that is a combination of gratitude, presence, creativity, playfulness, fun. That's my magic recipe. And I would just say for anyone who is seeking, who is considering a new you know, twist or turn on these roads, look for your magic recipe, because that's, mm -hmm. that's where the sticking power comes. Thank you both so much for being on the show. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. And thank you for the work that you're putting out in the world. So appreciate it. Thank you, Netta. It's been lovely. Liberty listeners, thank you guys for hanging out with Deborah and Willow and me. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Liberty Road is broadcast on all platforms. Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcast, and more. If you like what you've heard, please follow, rate, and review Liberty Road on Apple Podcast and Spotify. It helps us to know if these episodes are inspiring and equipping you to move into your middle third with intention. Liberty Road is created by executive producer Netta Jones, supervising producer Elizabeth Windham, producer Julia Windham, and music by Jack Jones. Thank you. 
Hi, this is Craig Robinson from Ways to Win. And support for this podcast comes from Invesco QQQ, the official ETF of the NCAA. The future isn't scary, not realizing its potential, however, could be. Just like on the recruiting trail, I've seen potential come in many forms as a coach. Learn more at Invesco.com slash QQQ. Let's rethink possibility. Invesco Distributors, Inc. 1-800-Flowers.com is more than your birthday, anniversary, or just because gift-giving destination. We put our hearts into everything we do to help you celebrate all life's special occasions with friends and family. From our farmers and bakers, florists and makers, Everything from 1-800-Flowers is made with love every step of the way. Because we know that nothing is more important than delivering a smile. To learn more, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST. Hi, I'm Dori Shafrir. And I'm Kate Spencer. And we are the hosts of Forever 35. And today, we're talking about Club Med, the best all-inclusive getaway for families. Today, Club Med has nearly 70 resorts worldwide, from beachside resorts in the Caribbean and Mexico, to magical locations in the Maldives and Morocco, to ski resorts in the mountains from Canada to the Alps. Between their all-inclusive family programming, wellness offerings, land and water sports, and their French heritage-inspired food and drink offerings, Club Med is the best way to elevate your family getaway, no matter which location you're at. To learn more, visit clubmed.us.